Reasons. We are discussing the chapter 12, Light, Shadows and Reflections of your book. In the previous video, we have discussed certain topics. First, we will revise that, bache. We will discuss what is light. Light is a form of energy which enables us to see the things around us. Light kya hai bachon? Ye wo form of energy hai jiski wajah se hum aas paas ki cheezon ko dekh pa rahe hai. That form of energy is known as light. Now the sources, the objects are differentiated on the various basis. First, on the basis of origin. Where they originated bachon? Who formed them? The first one are natural sources of light. The sources of light which are exist, which are made by nature, which occurs in nature, are known as natural sources of light. For example, the stars, the sun, the fireflies, some deep sea organisms which release their light and they are made by nature itself. They are occur in the natural resources, are known as natural source of light. The other one is artificial or human made sources of light. As its name indicates, the, the sources of light which are made by the human beings, which are made by the human beings for their well being, for their use, are known as human made or artificial source of light. For example, the tube light, which is placed you know, at the walls of your houses, the burning candle. These are artificial made sources. These are made by the human beings. Lighted bulb, the first bulb or electric bulb was discovered by Thomson Alvarez. So these are sources which are made by the human beings and they produce light. They give the light. Next one. On the basis of releasing their own light or not. There are two kind of objects on this basis and the first one are luminous objects. What are luminous objects? An object that gives its own light, that releases its own light is known as a luminous object. The object that light emit their own light is called luminous object. And the sun, the stars, the burning candle, the burning or the lighted tube light, the lighted electric lamp, the lighted torch, all those sources are releasing their light, their own light. So those sources are known as luminous objects. The objects which are releasing their own light are known as luminous objects. The second one, the opposite, the antagonistic of it is non-luminous objects. The objects which do not emit their own light which do not release their own light are known as non-luminous objects. An object which does not have the light of its own is known as or are known as non-luminous objects. Example, the animals, the people, the birds, chair, table, moon, they do not have their own light. They are visible to us because of the light falling on them will reflect into our eyes. That is why, that is the only reason why they are visible to us. They do not release their own light. That is why they are referred as non-luminous. Third classification is on the basis of passage of light through them. The objects are of three kinds on this basis. The first one is transparent. The second one is translucent objects. And the third ones are opaque objects. First we'll discuss what are transparent objects. The objects which allows the light to pass through them and as light can pass through them very easily, we can see the objects through them very clearly. It is very clear to see the objects around them or you know, apart them, in front of them. So, these objects are known as transparent objects. The objects which allows the light to pass through them and due to which we can be able to see the things clearly through them are called transparent objects. This is the transparent object which is, and these are the light rays which are falling over it. As you can see, the light rays are easily passing through them. So these are sir, this, that's the example of transparent object like glass, clean air, clean water, cellophane paper. All those are the examples of 
transparent objects. Next we have this case. Translucent objects. The objects which do not allow the whole light to pass through them. They only allow some portion of the light to pass through them. A small portion of light can be able to pass through the objects and those objects are referred as translucent objects. As the whole light is not passed through them, so the objects are not clearly visible through them. An the example of the translucent objects are butter paper, tissue paper, grounded glass. All these are the examples of translucent objects. Next. Third one were opaque objects. The objects which do not allow the light to pass through them at all are known as opaque objects. As the light cannot be able to pass through them, we cannot be able to see the objects. So these are the objects which are referred as opaque objects which do not allow the light to pass through them. The example of the opaque objects are brick wall, human body, cloths, metals, clay, etc. So these are examples of opaque objects. Now we'll discuss why during a thunderstorm or why during a rainy day we always first see the lightning and then heard the thunder. The speed of light is very high that is 3 into 10 raised to the power 8 meter per second that is approximately 30 crores meter per second. Whereas the speed of sound is only 340 meter per second. So the speed of light is quite much bigger as compared to the speed of sound. Speed of light is quite much higher as compared to the speed of sound. That is the reason, that is the particular reason that light enters into our eyes before as compared to the sound reaches to our ears. You see reason ki se bache, light pehle pahunch jati hai tak aur baad mein sound aata hai. And that is why we see the lightning first and then later on heard the thunder. So for that reason, for that difference in the speed of light and sound, we first see the lightning and then heard the thunder. Now we'll discuss rectilinear propagation of light. The property of a light due to which light always travels in a straight line or in a straight path, that property is known as rectilinear propagation of light. It is the property of light, it is the property of particles of light due to which it always travels along a straight path. That property is known as rectilinear propagation of light. Next we'll discuss what is a ray and what is a beam. What is a ray first? It is the line with an arrow. And that represents the motion of a particle, of a single particle of light. Light is also made up of particles and the particles are known as photons. So, the motion of single particle of light, one particle of light is represented by a ray. This arrow of a ray represents the direction of light. That means light is traveling from left to right. And if this arrow would be in this direction, that means light will be traveling from right of the screen to left. Next, B. Collection of rays, the combination of rays moving in direct various direction or same direction is known as a beam. A beam may be formed of parallel rays and it may be of unparallel or deviated rays from a single point. This is a point source for change. As this object is a, act as a point, so it releases the light rays in various directions. These light rays are not parallel to each other. So the beam which comes out of a point source is always found or goes in random directions. Now we will discuss an activity which shows rectilinear propagation of light. For this activity you require a candle bache, a matchstick, and a cardboard with having a hole in it. It's a quite large hole, you know, to make you understand better, but the small hole would be appropriate as well. For that, you have to keep this hole in front of the candle bachi. And then we'll observe certain observations. 
you can see this candle burning through this hole very clearly. The light which is coming from this candle passes straight through this hole into this screen. But if I, you know, displace this cardboard either below or above it, then you can't be able to see the light coming from this candle. Hmm. Now, Bache, in this activity, what happens actually? The light which is coming from this candle just passes straight through this hole into my eyes. But if I displace this cardboard above it, then the light which is coming from this candle is striking on this part. And this part is opaque. So the light cannot be able to pass through it and this candle flame is not visible to us. Either if I am lowering it down, then the light which is coming from this candle is striking on this part. And this is an opaque object. So this activity will prove that light always travels in a straight line. This is an activity, Mache in which we will see that the light, source of light, that is this LED bulb, will release the light in every direction. For that, Bache, you have to take a cardboard, a shoe box is more, much more appropriate for that. Make holes on its sides. I make bigger holes to make you understand, Bache, you can make the smaller holes, holes as well. So take that part and make the holes around its all the positions. Now, Bache, just switch on this source. After switching it on, place this cardboard over it. When you place the cardboard over it, you will observe, Bache, the light is coming through that hole. The light is coming through that hole in this form. The light is also coming through that hole in this form, Bache. So in each direction through each hole light is coming out. Likewise, you know, if I tilt this board in this manner, then you can see there are two holes on this side, Bache. And those two holes will give the light out. One is here, another one is here. Just like that, now do the same thing on the opposite side, Bache. There are two holes are there, Bache. One is there, this, and the other one is this. And the two beams of light are coming out of it. One is this one, and another one is this one. So light is coming out of it in every direction. In the upper direction as well, you can see, Bache. This is the uppermost direction of this board, which I placed over this bulb, Bache. So you can see the lights coming in all the direction from this source of light. Now we will discuss shadows. What is a shadow? It is a dark space or shade formed behind an opaque object when it blocks the light from a source of light is known as shadow. So what is a shadow? Shadow is basically is a dark space which is formed due to Opaque object comes in the path of light and that opaque object blocks the path of light. So a dark shape, the dark space is formed behind that object and that is known as a shadow. So what is a shadow? A shadow is a dark space or shade formed behind an opaque object. When it blocks the light from a source of light is called shadow. There are three conditions necessary for shadow. It's a very important question for your exams, Bache. What are the three conditions necessary to form a shadow? The first one is a source of light. Second, opaque object to obstruct the path of light, to stop the path of light. An opaque object is A third, an opaque uh, screen behind the object. Suppose I am the object and in front of that screen there is a light source. So there must be an opaque screen behind me to get my shadow. So, shadow is a dark space formed behind an opaque object. When that object blocks the path of light from its source is known as shadow. Three conditions necessary for shadow are source of light, an opaque object between the light and the screen and the third one is opaque screen itself on which the shadow is formed. Now we will discuss an activity which shows that source of light is necessary for the formation of shadow. For that, 
you require a pen bache you can use a book as well a source of light i am taking this torch as a source of light bache you can take a bigger torch as well that will make it more clear if i pass the light on the pen then you can easily see the shadow of the pen present on this board this black one bit is it visible na so this is the shadow which is formed on this screen behind that opaque object so there are three things present in this work thing bachi this is the source of light this is the opaque object and this one is the screen so if i turn it off then there is no shadow because there is no source of light in front of this opaque object and when or as soon as i switch it on the shadow will again formed so this activity will prove that in the absence of light no shadow will be formed and in the presence of light only a shadow or a darker shade is formed which so this activity proves that source of light is required for the formation of shadow now we will discuss the another condition required for the formation of shadow and that is the opaque screen this is the screen bache this is the pen this one is the battery if i you know switch it on the light falls on this opaque object and the formation of shadow is not taking place on this transparent object because the opaque screen is required to form the shadow of an object ye object jo hai bachche ye transparent hai isiliye is pen ki shadow is par ab ye light pad rahi hai dekho bachche yahan light pad rahi hai pen par ab iski shadow yahan form nahi ho rahi there is no shadow formation taking place here bachche because this object is a transparent object whereas if i bought the setup in front of a opaque screen this is a opaque screen bachche now this shadow is formed bachche look at the board bachche the black color pen is visible near the board at this place it's moving beta it is the shadow that is moving along with the pen so this is the source of light in my hand this is the opaque object that is pen in my hand this is the opaque screen on which this black shadow is formed so three conditions which are required for the formation of shadow are source of light the battery which is in my hand the opaque object which is the pen in this case and the opaque screen which is the white board in this case this will be more clear on another object that is a wall bache here look at here bache this is more darker because of that white board is a reflecting surface this wall will act as a you know more appropriate opaque surface for the formation of shadow so these are the three characteristics required for the formation of shadow